Hello again. I found something interesting as I was researching uh, Destination Nat for this radio. And I wanted to discuss uh, what exactly I found, but I'm going to do that a little bit later on in this video. Uh, it is a warning uh, to everyone out there that they need to just be aware of how this thing works. Um, but the first thing I wanted to do was at least to go over the topology of how I'm, everything is connected. So um, this is my simple test network I've got. Got my edge router for it right here. Sorry about the handwriting. I know it's terrible. Got two workstations behind the edge router. Got a wide area network with uh, this particular IP address set up right now. I've got a switch and an external uh, workstation that I'm working off of. And I'm, as a matter of fact, that's the workstation I'm on right here. Um, so I am going to manage the edge router um, over the wide area network set up. So that's the first thing that I'm going to show you guys how to do. Uh, set that up. Um, I don't advise to do this if you're actually connected to a internet facing wide area network connection. Um, mine's internal. As you can see, I'm using private IP addresses. But uh, let's get in there real quick and show you how that's done. Alright, so if we go into uh, firewall natting, firewall policies, we're going to hit the wide area network local rule set. And I created a rule here called allow external access to GUI. Um, I'll just show you real quick how that is set. I'm accepting everything, TCP, and then the destination I just put in 80 and 443. That allows me to connect to the local router itself, and I am good to go. So I'm actually connected through ETH or Ethernet 0 through 1.118. All right, let's talk about the destination NAT now. So there is a, if you go to the main website for Ubiquity and you hit on support, um, you go down to Edge Max. Let's look at all for the... Uh, edge router configurations uh, I believe it's on page 2 and there we are destination NAT okay so I'm going to take a minute just to talk about this document this is a very interesting document from Ubiquity um, this is the, they're telling you how to set up a destination NAT and so if you go down here they're going to look at their their diagram which is, is somewhat similar to uh, to what I'm doing um, ETH0 is on the internet facing side or WAN side and then obviously ETH1. I've got ETH1 and ETH2 um, on the LAN side. Um, so if you notice there's two IP addresses here. Uh, they don't really tell you that you need to have two IP addresses here but uh, I guess maybe you, that's a given. They do have a little blurb here that says for the purposes of this article it is assumed that the routing and interface configuration are already in place and that reachability has been tested. All right, so I guess they're assuming that you have that in place. So um, if you don't read that little blurb and you start doing this, it's not going to work. And I'll show you what I mean. But anyway, let's go ahead and look at this real quick. They want you to set up. Uh, uh, we're going to add a new rule to an existing rule set. So this is your wide area network in rule set. Um, you're going to give it a description, enable it, accept it, and uh, use TCP. Then you're going to go to the destination tab, which is down here, and you can put in 443. Then it wants you to set up the destination NAT rule itself. You're going to set up the translation address and the port, and then the destination address, which is, on the, which is your WAN area network side address that you're going to connect to from the outside going in. Okay, they've got one rule for 443 and one rule for 10443. Um, this is very interesting, and I'm going to touch base with this again um, on one of the things that it says up here, but I'll, I'll get back to that. But the, this kind of sets up where um, I, I thought there were some things that were concerning about this whole, whole setup, but I'll get back to that in a minute. So let's just go ahead and set this thing up. So I'm going to go over to my router. We're going to go into firewalls. First thing we're going to do is we're going to set that policy. We're going to hit the wide the NAT in for, I mean the um, WAN in, and we're going to add a rule. 
and I'm gonna and I'm I'm actually gonna change this. I'm gonna make I'm gonna call this rule allow RDP because uh, I, I basically I have RDP. I have Windows workstations that are on the back side of my uh, edge router, so I'm gonna use RDP instead of port 443. The, the the concept is the same. It's just a different service. So we're going to accept. In this case, I need to use both TCP and UDP, and then the source is going to be 389. And I'm going to hit save. Okay, so um, a lot of people at this point in time will actually move the order of this rule up, but you really don't have to because there is no uh, block all. This is not the block all or our default. I'm sorry, default uh, blocking rule um, if you go to stats there actually is one in here for this rule set I thought that was interesting I guess they put one in for each rule set this is the actual default drop everything so if this doesn't work and if this doesn't work and if this doesn't work the action is to drop everything all right so that's pretty much it for the rules we're allowing uh, port 3389 through okay so let's go set up our NAT so now we're gonna do a destination NAT Again, we're going to call this allow RDP. Interface is going to be ETH0 address. Um, that's actually not the address, but uh, I'm just going to include it in there. The one I'm going to use is 24. Okay, so then we're going to do both TCP and UDP. And then we're going to go down here. Um, that's the address this is the external address that I'm going to use and then again the ports match up now obviously you can you can change the destination you can put this destination point as any uh, port as anything you want to but then it, you know it's got it for RDP it's got to be 3389 when it actually gets through to the land side um, and that's what they're doing with um, that other rule they're actually doing that they're taking uh, port 10 443 and then translating it to 443 but uh, we'll, we'll look at that in a little bit so we're gonna hit save so now we have our firewall policy in place and we have our destination that rule in place now at this point if you weren't really paying close attention to that document you would say all right I'm gonna go up here and try to connect via RDP and guess what it allowed me that's interesting pause because I wasn't sure exactly what was going on um, basically if you look at my interface here um, I've only got one IP address assigned to it and I am trying to connect via RDP um, to this IP address which is not on the router right I'm, I'm 118 and I'm trying to connect to 119 but yet if I hit connect it's prompting me for username and password and I bet you if I put this in it's gonna let me go all the way through and you can see that I'm connected to win 10 TST 1 yet that's not there now the first time that I did this uh, it would not pass RDP traffic until I actually put that IP address in there. So I thought that was kind of weird the way that that worked. And if I go and I look at the configuration that I just downloaded and ex and extracted for my interfaces for Ethernet Zero, all I've got is 192.168.1.118. Now I do have my my rules in place. So I've got my uh, allow RDP in rule set. And I believe down here below there's another one. Yep, here it is. It shows that this is the, the uh, destination NAT rule as shown. And it does have that IP address. But like I said, it didn't work before, but now it's working. So I'm not sure what the deal is there. Um, maybe there's a ghost in the machine. Who knows? All right, so... I want to go back and look at this document real quick. So what was interesting to me was this information for this 10.43. So it's telling me that uh, it's telling me that I did not need to add a rule set up here, a rule that was part of the rule 
set. I only needed to add the one rule set, and it clearly states no rules added to allow TC port 1043 through the firewall. This is because port forwarding NAT translations happens before the firewall is consulted, meaning that the port is already translated to 443 before it hits the firewall. And I was like, hmm, that's interesting. So I found a little training document here that basically shows that. So when you're coming into the router, it does DNAT first. Then it says, are you going local? If you're going to go local, you're going to go down to here to the firewall local. If you're not, you're going to go to firewall in and firewall out. So there is, the DNAT happens before. That got me thinking even more. So one of the things that I was concerned about was this wide open setting at the very top. Basically, we're not limiting it to anything. We're not limiting it to any addresses for the destination. We're not telling it to, to only use this NAT, whatever. So I'm like, okay, well, if you know the address behind the firewall, you should be able to get to it. So just want to show you real quick that if I go here to my Ethernet, now I'm going to change my Ethernet adapter on the external workstation. I'm going to change it. I'm going to change the gateway to the IP address of the edge router. Okay, so my gateway is no longer 1.1, it's 1.118. All right, so once I do that, now I'm actually going to be... So if I know the IP address of the device, in this case, I know it's 10.10.1.24. I should be able to hit it and you can see I'm connected so not only that but what's also interesting is if I actually hit my other network which is a 1010 network I have uh, that other device let's just take a look at that real quick you guys probably remember but here's the other one this is one I've been hitting 101024 now I've got a 101228 if I hit that I get a good connection and again I can alright so I'm actually connecting in as test user and we'll just go show you this box that I'm actually on win test 2 not win test 1 I'm on win test 2 which is on a completely separate network so that, that to me that's a huge firewall hole that's in your firewall by allowing that now you can you can limit this now you can fix this and I'll show you how to fix it real quick just get out of here real quick I don't need that open if I get back over here to my firewall, I go to my NAT box, go to my firewall policy, and I'm going to click on Edit Rule for Wide Area Network In, and I'm going to look at this particular rule. Okay, so if we go back over to Destination, we can actually change this, and change this to the actual destination of the internal host which is 10.10.1.24. So I'm now saying only allow traffic to go to that device internally. Hit save. Now what's interesting is it does have an address group here. So I'm thinking that if you set up an address group, instead of putting in a full address up here, let's say you had like maybe eight or nine servers that, that were all sitting behind your firewall on port 443 and you wanted to allow that traffic in just to those particular devices you would set up an address group and then and then put the address group here and then it would only allow those IP addresses in um, so anyway if we go back now that we've uh, we've changed that rule if I go back over here and I actually try to connect to 10.10.2.28 which was win 10 test 2 I should not get 
should not be able to connect. And I can't because now I closed out that firewall. I'm only allowing 1010.1.24 to go through. So it's like the firewall on the inside of the device is where after the NAT is taken place is where it's actually allowing and blocking. So it's 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 actually looking at the 1010 or the internal IP address when it gets to that point of the firewall rule as it's coming in. Um, I would have thought it would have been farther farther out towards the edge of the Ethernet device itself, but um, obviously this device does not do that. So anyway, I thought that was interesting. I thought the way that uh, Ubiquity actually wrote up that uh, that rule uh, to me is a little questionable. Um, they could have taken the extra step and, and, and said what internal address they wanted it to be. I mean, they, they're showing internal addresses up here that they're using. So they could have put an internal address here and maybe talked about it a little more. Um, but this does raise, I mean, if, if you look at this particular rule and you're looking at uh, port 443, uh, one of the other considerations is that now you're allowing port 443 into everything without limiting it in some way and if you've got legacy websites or, or web servers behind this firewall that you think are safe and then someone is able to guess um, your internal IP infrastructure and then they're able to hit your firewall in some way either by using it as a gateway like I did um, I'm not sure that it wouldn't work if if you had an ex if you had a router set up, and you just went to your routing, and you put up a static route, and you told it to use that particular route from whatever device you're connecting from. If you told it to, you said, "I'm you know my next hop is going to be." Um, 192.168.1.118 which is my wide area network interface IP address that that wouldn't act in the same way and so if you know the internal IP address and you and you were able to say I've got this internal IP address and I know the, uh, the hop to it it doesn't matter what this is it's I would think that it would work um, I'm, I'm not a developer and I'm sure heck is not a programmer so I'm not sure if if you can spoof that or if that's any way you know if you maybe you have to be on the network segment um, but I know that you know most of my neighbors have young kids that are out there playing on the network doing dumb stuff and um, they could potentially be on my network segment that's uh, attached you know that's of course if you've got a uh, a wide area network that is inner internet faced um, and and is actually sitting on the internet so and, and a lot of these do so you know if, if somebody just comes in and looks at this particular rule and follows it verbatim uh, they've just opened themselves up to a huge hole at least that's my opinion I don't I don't know if that's uh, that's valid or not but um, okay well anyway that was my big warning about uh, this particular subject and uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. Have a great day.